is up guys, Sharpen here. Now on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your favorite color of the alphabet? Because the only possible answer here is triangle. Okay, enough about that. Today we're doing a tutorial that's been requested a lot of times. And it's called indoor lighting. Or lighting indoors. Yes, you can now light up your rooms or houses or stuff like that, basically. Now this idea was suggested by the people of my Discord server. If you want to suggest tutorials yourself, I recommend you join the server yourself or drop them in the comments below. Now your idea will have to be voted on if you want to see it featured on my channel, so good luck with that. So you guys leave your suggestions, I make a voting poll and you guys vote on the next tutorial as well, that's how it works. So drop your ideas below and we can get on the video. So I'm gonna open up this indoor lighting thing and I already have uh, a setup which doesn't really matter for us. I was testing things. Okay, let me just uh, delete all this so I can start from scratch. Okay, importing the house. Now I'm gonna position it minus 15 down. So, uh, so it's nearly ground level but I can still see the floor inside which is what I want. Uh, for some reason there's no bed in here. Okay, so we set up the house with little flower pots and chests and beds and stuff. For some reason it didn't have them, even though it had them before I tested this. I don't know. But before we start anything, I want to introduce you to the light. What is the light in my animator? You can imagine it like a color which travels through the air and only becomes visible when it hits a face of a block. Now of course the light is not visible if it's being obstructed, so you get this nice little shadow. This might not be the actual way it works, but it's pretty close to how it is, so you can use that as like some sort of reference explanation. Now this color is traveling through the air by the range you set it to. One block is 16 units in this program, so if I change this to 16, the light is only traveling one block around, so this is basically a rough idea on how lighting works in my animator. Again, this might not be the actual case, but it's pretty close to original, so you can use it as a reference explanation, as I mentioned before. What's interesting about this is that lights add up. So if I were to duplicate this light, let's say give it like a blue tint, you can see both the blue and the yellow light. If I make the blue light invisible, you can obviously see a difference. If I make the yellow light invisible, you can also see the difference. So these two lights add up to one another. So what I'm getting here, we can make some pretty amazing realistic lights. Let's say if I were to decrease the range of this light. So the highlights are now bluish and the shadows of the light are yellow. We layer down the light into multiple colors and that makes it more dynamic, more realistic because lights have multiple tints to them. Okay, let's remove these and let's get back to our house. Let's set it back to daytime. So the first thing I want to do is go to sunlight color and make it black. We don't want the sun interfering with our scenery. Then if we come in here, this doesn't look particularly realistic. If you take a look around in your room, notice the, some shadows on like, I'm looking at the chair right there. The shadows have like a bluish tint, so I want to achieve that here. So I want to go to dark blue and change the ambient color to a bit dark bluish. Like, look at this. This looks like a nice evening lighting or something like that. I'm gonna go for an evening lighting because look at this. Already looks nice just by doing that. I don't know, I kind of have a touch for that. Okay, now we can actually get to the actual lighting here. I want to add a spotlight. Don't use point lights because they're laggy. As you see, I have the high quality render turned on. If your computer is too weak to always be displaying the high render, because we're gonna be using a lot of lights and this is a good way for you to uh, lag out. If your computer is too weak to be showing the high render settings, I suggest you click this icon every once in a while to get the rendered image so you see exactly what you're doing. Take your sweet time, the lighting is very important, as I mentioned a lot of times in my videos before. Turn the light so it's uh, facing through the window because this is the outside light and um, I want to increase the radius. So now it's like very wide, if I might say so. Uh, the fade size is going to be 100 so there's no uh, sharp edges, so this is the outside fade and it makes it look more soft, more natural, more diffused like in the atmosphere and spot sharpness is uh, the outer radius so uh, I want to... Uh, Put that down to zero so it's like the softest light possible because that's how the outside world works. Now if I turn off this light you obviously see a difference here inside the house. For some reason the clouds are flickering, flickering because of the light. I don't know if that's right or not <laughs> but 
Uh, we're taking a look at the walls here. You can obviously see a difference. So maybe I want to increase that light just a little bit so you can see, so it's more obvious. Let's uh, make this be our shadow light. So I, I want to have the shadows like this. So this is like an evening lighting, as I said. Depending on the time of the day, you can change the color from white to more dark bluish or so. So I'm going for an evening lighting. So I want to go for something like this. Now if I make it invisible, invisible, you can obviously see a nice tint on the walls. This is important. These tiny changes are very important. Now once we have that, I want to duplicate this spotlight, so we have two. As you see, the light is now a lot uh, stronger, but I want to change it so it's like white or almost white, like have it a bit bluish or so. Now as you see, um, this made something, but I want to uh, decrease the range a little bit so it's like weaker, but also noticeable. So here's a little test I like to do. So if I um, make the white, okay, let's just rename them so we know what I'm working with. If I make the blue light invisible, you can obviously see a change in the colors. If I make the white light invisible, you can obviously see a change in the light levels. So both the lights used are necessary, they are here. Now, if you watched my 10 useful Minimator tips video, you know that I've been talking about the PCSS shading before. Like, it's basically the shadows getting blurrier and blurrier the further away they get from the object. And the way you achieve that is actually with spotlights, with multiple spotlights being positioned next to each other, so they blur the shadow the further away they are. I want to do just that, because that's how our atmosphere works, and this is the outside shadow. This is the outside light, I said shadow by mistake. As we noticed before, lights add up in Mighty Meter, so they become stronger. So I just said that I want to duplicate my spotlight and move it slightly away to get that PCSS effect. So that will make the light a lot brighter, so I want to uh, tune them down just a little bit so they're weaker, so I don't accidentally make everything too bright. Now I want to put this um, in a folder, call it left, because this is the left side. Actually, it's the right side, never mind, it's just for me. Then uh, I want to duplicate this folder, as you see it got brighter, and move it away. So now I have like two spotlights next to each other, like so. <laughs> look at this. So if I take a look inside, they both make a difference, but it's not too bright. So this looks like a nice ambient thing. Let's put this in a folder again, call it left again. I don't know, I'm not very original. Let's duplicate this left, so now we have four spotlights and move them on the other side because there is light falling from the other side of the window as well. Uh, I'm just gonna put that to 180 degrees, so if we take a look inside, you can see this looks pretty nice. It looks like there's actual light falling through the windows and it's not too blurred or anything, like, look at that. Maybe we could try to make it even more perfect, as you could say, and try to add another light, maybe light uh, that part of the set, like the door mostly, so it looks more dynamic, widespread or something. Now that we got that done, we could put both of the lefts in a folder, call it outside lighting. So this is what's outside. Now I wanna do some lighting inside. Now if you were to go into a lot of detail, I could just add a spotlight, place it here on the ground, turn it in that direction, point it upwards, increase the radius, fade size, the sharpness, put it to a bit bluish, and then just call it reflected light because that's the bounce light from the floor to the walls. But I'm not going that deep into it because then we, we would actually have like a million lights in here and that would even lag my computer, which is a real beast, if I may say so. We are only going to add a couple of torches. Okay, once we got the torches inside, it should look like this. Actually, uh, for you, it should look like this or so. Like, the torches should be bright for you. But um, if you notice this, if we take a look at this here, the handle is white. The top is what's supposed to be glowing, but the handle is bright as well because the entire torch is bright. I do not like that at all. So I want to turn off the glowing block brightness to zero. By the way, this is in the settings tab and in the graphics you can find the glowing block glowing block brightness. This try to say that five times fast. Glowing block brightness. Okay, turn that off. And now I have made a couple of texture packs to make certain parts of the blocks glow. I want to do that, but first let me explain how that works. I'm gonna duplicate this torch, and I want to apply a texture to the first one. Just apply the blocks no glow, and this is the torch no glow, and apply a blocks glow texture to the second one and call it torch glow. 
Now, uh, as you see, the top of the torch has disappeared because uh, I'm using the torch no glow. This is the part that is not glowing on both of my torches, but the torch glow is only the head, like it's only the top. This is great because that's what I wanted to do in this texture pack. I wanted to layer down the parts that are glowing and that are not. So I wanna um, create a new instance of this in the timeline. So this is the torch glow. If I log that on any of my torches, as you see, the torch is now full again, like it's it's built together. But the torch no glow is just the handle and the torch glow is just the top. So if I go down to color and make it bright, as you see, only the top is bright. This is the purpose of my texture pack. There will be a download link in the description for all three texture packs. First the blocks that are not glowing, first the blocks that are glowing, and uh, the third of all is the redstone, so it's like a light glow. So we can layer down the redstone's glow as well, so it's not fully bright or fully dull. I wanna duplicate the torch glow and put it on the second torch, so now both of my torches have the torch glow. Next, uh, select both of your torches, go to graphics, tick off cast shadows, so that your torches do not interfere with the lights which we're gonna apply to them right now. Now, the torch emits light in all directions, so I want to use a point light. Yes, I know I told you not to use them because they are laggy, but we have no choice because uh, we need that. So the point light, where is it? Oh, it's this one. Let's position the point light to be directly inside the torch top. So it's like in here. If I rotate the camera around, you can see it's inside. Now I wanna determine how far this light will go. I wanna, I wanna have it like this 100, maybe 100. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Now I wanna uh, change that to like an orange color. This is like an orange tint to it. Now if I duplicate the point light, change the color to yellow and decrease its range as you see, we have the multiple uh, layers of this. Now I can uh, duplicate it once again, make it white, scale down the radius, like just to make that like inner glow here or something. Wait, I want to have like an in-between step because this is just too harsh. I want to select this top, the top one, the orange one, duplicate it, put it in between. So what I have here is two orange ones on the top, then a yellow one, then a white one, just so you know where I'm at. Uh, the top one should be a darker orange, this inner one should be like a bit brighter orange, but also decrease its range a little bit. What we have right now is the dark orange with a 100 range, then a bright orange with a 72 range, then a yellow one with a 43 range, and a white one with 14 range. This is what I've done, and uh, I'm pretty glad with how it all looks, except this white one, if I just no, that's the yellow one in general. No, everything is uh, very bright in the center, so this is something I'm bothered about. But okay, yeah, uh, I have a rough idea. Just select all the torches and uh, increase the fade size. Yeah, 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 increase the fade size. This makes it a lot more smooth. Oh, look at that, it's perfect. Now if I uh, put all these in a folder, call it Torch Glow or something. Oh, I already have that, so let's call it Torch Light, so I know what it is. Duplicate the torchlight, lock it on the second torch, and uh, adjust the position. No, it's already in the cap, so it's okay. And uh, basically, what we have is a pretty nice indoor lighting. Look at this. I could live in here. This looks nice. Uh, if there's anything more that I could do, I'm thinking right now. Maybe go to the render settings and mess with your SSAO. Okay, so I've done something pretty interesting. I went to the SSAO settings, increased the SSAO power and decreased the radius. So I got like a nice, so I got like a nice sharp dark edge around uh, the blocks. What's interesting about this is you can also open this chest. I know, I know this is pretty normal to open chests, but look at this. It looks so nice, even the shadows and everything. Look at this. It's just, it's something about it. Look at that. Like. I know it's just lighting, but I'm fascinated by this. Like, how could you not like this? Look at this. It looks so nice. I mean, lighting is important. Look, at, it made me happy. I'm smiling right now, and I, it's not even an animation or anything. It's just a tutorial. I'm smiling because of this lighting right here. That's how important lighting is. Uh, I don't know what else to add. Let's see. There has to be something. I like to overdo things. Uh, maybe add another spotlight. Let's try with reflections and stuff. What I have done is this. Not really much of a difference, but it does make like for a more, uh, it's daytime, it's not that dark anymore. Look at the ceiling, like, it's like it bounces off the light from the outside, and it's basically just four lights down here. If this light here in front of me were to fall on the ground, it would bounce off 
as this light up here. It's a weak light and it's got the similar color than the outside light. It's like a reflection of this one. Then this one's got another reflection like here. It's not too accurate, but it's something to add up to your scenery. It's like the reflections of the outside light. If a light bounces off the floor, it bounces away. Like, let me demonstrate. This is me without a reflection. This is me with a reflection. Let me just try to, like that. Uh, I don't know how to explain, but you, you see uh, me getting brighter because the light is bouncing off this piece of paper. So this is basically what I did with the ins inside lights. This is it. Uh, there's not much more I can go into it. But if you want a more uh, daytime setting, you should make the lights outside brighter and the lights inside dimmer. This is my tip. If you want to make, like this is an evening lighting, I show a tutorial for an evening lighting. If you want a daytime lighting, like it's more bright outside, you should just uh, increase the brightness of the outer uh, lights. Choose different colors because dark blue is like more like an evening lighting thing. Maybe increase like a lighter blue or something because um, shadows do have a bluish tint. So if you're going for shadows, you should always have like a bluish tint to them. Uh, if it's late, of course, dark blue. If it's bright, of course, a little brighter blue. But don't overreact. Don't make everything blue. Also, use a lot of uh, a lot of levels to the lights. Low, um, if you take a look at my torchlight, you can see that the outside is dark orange. The and the closer it is, is just uh, orange, yellow, white. So these these are what I call light layers. You should use a lot of them because they contribute to the color of the light and therefore your white balance and your entire image. I talked about that in the previous tutorial, which I called the most important animation tutorial. And that's true, I still believe that's the most important thing you can learn about animation, but lighting is also something you have to take note in. So this is my tutorial for you. I don't think I can say much more. Good luck, I guess. If you liked the video, you could uh, leave a thumbs up or click the subscribe button if you enjoyed. Also, do suggest your tutorials because I'm doing what you guys are requesting me to do. This is all yours. So, uh, thank you for watching and stay sharp.